Welcome. This is Understanding Holiness with Bill and Diane Yuri. Now, that's the first one, personal difference. The second one is transformational. And I see it here really because I've con compared and contrasted this story of Moses and the burning bush with creation. Think about it for a moment. You've got a garden and a desert, which means what God intended and what I make of the world. If you don't need him and his holiness, you'll make whatever you're touching a desert-like reality. Wilderness, wandering around. He gives us his best, we choose our best, which is always brokenness. So he comes to us and he says, well, I come to a person who's, I wanna make tend a garden, you and Adam and Eve tend this garden, but Moses, I want you to tend these sheep. So you've got tending, you've got angels in Genesis 3 with fire-like sword, a sword filled with fire. You've got a bush here filled with fire. It's the Lord saying, again, I'm redoing, I'm recreating what you have totally damaged. You and me, we're the ones who've broken the world. It's our sin. And the Lord says, well, I'm gonna start here. I've got a tree, a sword of flame in Genesis 3. I've got a bush of flame in, Gen in Exodus 3. I'm intrigued by that. So all of my holy women, holy men thing that I've made of the world, my perverting reality, I have a chance now for the Lord to remake what I've perverted, if I'll let him. Now, I'm intrigued that when Jesus comes, angels say, this is the holy thing. Demons say, we know who you are, you're the holy one. This is God in our dust, God in our flesh. He's baptized, meaning he goes into our death and is raised up as he is when he's risen from the dead. He goes into a wilderness of temptation. Why? For you and for me. He knows exactly where people like Moses and me end up without his holy presence. Now, this is marvelous to me. You've got a personal holiness which no one else conceived. Oh, they had experiences, but no personal relationship with the Holy One. You've got transformation offered, not just fixing your problems, it's changing who I am. But you also have this marvelous conception of a God who comes and he offers me his moral nature. And I think it's very important for you and me these days to understand that holiness is, is not impossible if God comes to dwell with us, to walk with us and to live in us, to change us personally and transform, transforming us. But he makes us moral. There's always a goodness that's ethical, that changes the way you live life. And in our day and age, it's always been the case for Christians who are truly filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus. They, are, they live lives of absolute integrity. They live lives of righteousness, of faithfulness. Why? Not because they're good. It's because they're full of the good one. They've been changed by his nature. Because the Lord says throughout the Old Testament, beginning here in Exodus really, I'm gonna show you what goodness looks like. I'm gonna give you a law, and the law is not you doing stuff for me, it's me showing you who I am. I am always holy, I'm always faithful. This Holy One is always sharing himself. He's distinct, he's other than me, but he's come to show himself to me and to give himself to me. And through what Jesus did on the cross, his risen life, and now this descent of the Holy Spirit, it's possible for you and me to live not as divine, only God is holy. But when the Holy One comes, he makes where he is, and the one where he is, he makes us like himself. And the expression of that in the world is, I live now with a love and a law that looks like Jesus. His standards never change. So morality is very important in a world that's full of the opposite. The Holy One can come. No, he has come. And he wants to offer to us the wholeness of whole hearts and a rightness of how we walk every single day. It's a wonderful gift for all of us. Take a moment to reflect on the following. joining us as we seek to better understand biblical holiness.